I'm going to concentrate on um, how to diagnose tears and how to differentiate labral variation from tears, because that's a, a big issue. Again, nothing uh, conflicting. Shoulder instability has been around a long time. This is a quote from Hippocrates. Uh, many persons owing to shoulder instability have been obliged to abandon gymnastic exercises and from the same misfortune have become inept and warlike practices and have perished from their shoulder instability. And he actually advanced uh, treatment options, one of which was uh, driving a hot uh, poker into the shoulder. Um, that fused, I'm sure, <laughs> the capsule, but probably led to some neurologic damage as well. Um, the shoulder, you could say, is predisposed to instability. I know a lot of surgeons don't like that term, but if you look at the articular surfaces, I think it's a good uh, argument that it's predisposed to instability. There's a very shallow uh, and very small glenoid articular surface articulating with the spherical humeral head. Now, this allows us a wide range of motion, but at the expense of stability. So you really require some stabilizers there to help the joint uh, function. The primary stabilizers include that shallow glenoid cup, intact cartilage and labrum, which together give you a suction effect. So this is something that's pretty dramatic. And um, if you ever disarticulate a cadaveric shoulder um, and you stick the arm on, onto the glenoid, you can lift up the body from that suction effect alone. So that's uh, not the whole body, but you can lift them up off the table a bit. So and that suction effect is very important. I, I kind of draw the analogy to a can that you can't open, you know, a jar. And the jar has suction in it, and it's difficult to open. So the way you, you can muscle it, you know, or you can break that suction. So I usually just take a, a knife or something and hit the edges, deform it a bit, and then you can open it easily. So that's kind of similar to getting a labral tear or a cartilage lesion at the shoulder. Those things cause uh, the suction to go away and lead to a feeling of popping and instability in these patients. There's also uh, primary stabilizers in terms of the surrounding ligamentous structures. So the glenohumeral ligaments and the capsule, especially the inferior glenohumeral ligament, are important primary stabilizers. And then we have secondary stabilizers. And all around the body, you have these secondary stabilizers that support the joints. And those are the surrounding muscles. Um, so we have the rotator cuff muscles, the four muscles in concert pull, humeral head into the glenoid. The long head of the biceps is a humeral head depressor, uh, important for uh, preventing the humeral head from coming upward, the deltoid and scapular muscles as well. And so these are considered dynamic stabilizers. And this is kind of an analogy that I, I use for this, that these fingers kind of approximate the rotator cuff holding the humeral head. When you're at rest, they just kind of passively support the uh, stability. But when you go into abduction, you activate those rotator cuff muscles, which pulls the humeral head into the glenoid, here the palm, and help the humeral head rotate instead of translate. So that's an important uh, uh, concept here with the rotator cuff as a stabilizer.